Hey guys, so today we are working on the Dodge. We're gonna be changing out the carburetor on this thing. I got a brand new one. There it is. It's just an eBay special, but it looks decent and it says it's the right one for it. We will find out here today on Chaos. So we're gonna go ahead and start ripping everything apart down to the carburetor. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. For those do-it-yourselfers that don't really work on cars that often. This will help you out, hopefully. All right, let's do it. All right, first we're gonna remove that bolt there. Lay this aside. Some people, they like to disconnect, but this has like very little electric, so we're just gonna disconnect the ground just to be safe. I bought a new air filter because I thought that might have been why I was running bad, but it still run horribly. All right, so you have, it looks like two vacuum lines. You have one going into the exhaust back here. It's just that hose right here. It's already popped off when I lifted it off. And then you have one going into the um, engine. Right here, you just unhook it from one of these two spots. Let's try to wiggle that off there, maybe. Uh, my beads are just to pop this out. I don't know. We'll see. Come on. There we go. Yep. Okay. So that's removed. And that lifts right off there. No issues. I'm just going to sit this over here. Don't want to drop all this stuff. Alright. So there's our carburetor. It is disgusting. It's probably the original for this thing. It says Holly, doesn't it? Maybe it's not original. I don't know. Did these come with the Holly? Apparently, it's a Holly carb. That surprised me. I would have known that. I probably just bought the rebuild kit from Holly. But let's go ahead and remove this and see what we can do. I might rebuild this and put it back on. Let's do it. All right. So I'm unhooking the fuel line. It's just a little hose clamp. You're not supposed to use these, but everybody uses them. It could tear into your fuel line or whatever line you're using. I've never had an issue with that, but some people say they do. Um, so back here is your auto choke going into the intake down there. So you're just going to unhook that cable. Pops off like that. You remove the rod. I'm not sure you can see this. Here, let me get a little closer. Yeah, see that just pops on right there. Flips around. And you pull the rod out and careful do not drop this little clip because you need it so we're just gonna set that aside and we're done with that we're gonna lay this clip over here and that fuel line. give it a little yeah there we go oh yep that's definitely a pressure rest <laughs> all right so that's removed just leave it over to the side and we're gonna have to probably use this part let's go check I think we need that yep threads right into the front okay so now we're going to remove the tensioner springs for the uh, idle controller and the throttle cable so I'm just gonna lift so these are on this side grab one at a time if you can and it goes on the inside through there. We're just going to lay it right over here, out of the way. And that one's just hooked on there, right there. And that's out of the way now. It's going to be a washer that goes right here. Got another tensioner spring right there. Let's find the way it comes off and let's try to grab it. If I can. Unhook that. our washer we don't want to lose that so we'll sit it right here on the battery for now and that should be unhooked from the carb now yeah and now we got to get the throttle cable unhooked there we go so that little pin just a little cotter pin not much and it just goes through as much as you can see it uh, yeah it's a little hole right there and now we're just gonna unhook that is our throttle cable there we go. We may need to reuse this part here. We'll check. Let's go check real quick. 
Oh, from the looks of it, yes, it goes right here. So yeah, we're gonna take that part, put it on here. Okay, gonna move these and sit them over with the rest of them. Boom, boom. And now we are going to be removing some of these vacuum lines from back here. Let's see if I can get a good view. There we go. So you got one on the carb right here. And I don't know if this one's going in the carb, I can't really see. But, and then this one is definitely going in the carb. So we have to disconnect these lines gently. I don't want to break anything. There we go. That one's going to be the upper one. And this one should be the lower. Yep, just twist it off. Let's see this one off to the side. And this one off to this side. That way we know what goes where. I'm not sure about that one. That one's kind of greasy and gross. So I'm going to have to get something on there. Okay, so I got that vacuum line unhooked. It's right here. You just got to get it off. And that's the vacuum line going into the engine on this side. I'm going to look into it, see if I can just bypass all these. Just cork all these off and just put like an air filter over here. Because that's just the breather valve, I believe, for the intake. Or not for the intake, but for the... Okay, just got the vacuum line unhooked back here. Let's see if I can get in there a little closer. Yeah, it's the one that goes on the bottom of the carb right here, big boy. Goes in right here. It's just a breather valve. So we're going to go ahead and unbolt the carb, and I think it should just lift right off now. I think I got everything unhooked. There's one, two, three, four bolts. Now we're going to go find out what's up. Two, three, four bolts from the carb. And now we are ready, hopefully, to lift this off. Move that over a little bit. Oh, no, nope, I missed one vacuum on right here. I just saw it. Hook that, sit it aside. And it looks like there's some wires right here we have to unhook. Unplug that one. And unplug that one. Come on, there we go. All right, so let's see if we can lift this off now, shall we? Nope, there's another vacuum line right there. As you can see it right here. So when you go lift this up, you can probably lift this off and take that one loose. Yeah. All right, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lift this off. Okay, got the old carbs, carb off. It's right here. We're gonna have to move this over to this one. This one does not have the electrical stuff, which is odd, so I don't know why. And there's nowhere to bolt this one onto this, so they look a little bit different. So we're gonna find out if it's gonna run okay with it. I, I think it's just like auto stuff, which we don't really need. I'm kind of converting this to a little bit different style. This carburetor is probably just temporary anyway. So as long as it runs and drives okay, I'll be fine with this carb. Got the carbs off. Now I just need to make sure everything is transferred from this one to this one that I can transfer. The piece of this right here needs to be on here. That's what you bolt your air intake stuff, air filter on. And Everything else looks the same. This thing weighs like a lot more than this one. I know it's because this one's a lot older and it's a holly, so it's built better. Now these screws are made not to be removed, which is weird. So I'm gonna figure out how to rebuild this thing. And we're gonna clean it, rebuild it, bring it back to make it look like this one. And I'll probably slam it back in there for now. Eventually I'm planning on Put in either a Holly or Edelbrock intake and put a four barrel carb set up on it because it's just kind of gutless. So we're gonna eventually swap it out. But yeah, that's the plan. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing put in and see if it's gonna run. Okay, so I'm sitting here looking, making sure all the vacuum lines line up. And one of the things I noticed is this has one extra 
port, which we'll probably just plug that off. We'll leave the plug on there. Let's leave that on there. And so we have that, that matches. But this one is over this way, so it's gonna be closer to the driver's side on the original. So it's gonna be on the opposite side of that pipe for the oil vacuum line. Just letting, you know, that's where that goes. And another thing, you really don't have to disconnect this upper one right here. It actually goes into this part. So I just hooked it back up because this one was already hooked up. So I was like, okay, I'm getting a new line. So I'll just put that all in there. So I just have to hook up that vacuum line, that vacuum line. And also on the front, there's only one port for that line right there, that vacuum line. On the front of the old one I took off. It's got a big one and a small vacuum line. So I'm gonna go find out where that vacuum line goes. Okay, so here is the lower one that I was telling you about. It goes up under, looks like, Kind of tease into those. It's got a yellow line on it. Wraps up over. Goes into this thingy. And, and it kind of tees in and winds in with all the other vacuum lines. So I can probably just plug that off and see if it runs okay. If it has any issues, we'll try to figure out where that vacuum line can hook up. That's okay. I got the new carb sitting on there. It looks pretty darn good. I'm happy with how it's fitting on there. No problems. They didn't have to adjust it at all. That part sits right in there. And we just have to get these bolts partially threaded. And then we can use the impact to snug them down. Now if you use an impact, be careful. Don't over torque it. You'll break stuff. I just use my little cordless impact because it's not super powerful. So I normally don't break anything with that. Like, I wouldn't even trust using that on my lug nuts for my car because it's great, but it doesn't seem like it, t it torques quite enough for lug nuts. But it works great for stuff like this. It's a time saver. Snug. Good. Then you gotta get in there, a little bit of an angle. Good. Oops, and we lost it. <laughs> but yeah, it saves time like that. It's like, and now it's already installed. All right, so now I just gotta hook up all the linkage. I already hooked up most of the vacuum lines. I hooked that one, hooked up the back one there, and that one there. So those are all hooked up, and I didn't have to worry about the other one because it's already going into this part. So comes brand new parts you put the brand new parts on all right so let's go ahead and put the that bar back in and we'll see if this thing's gonna run and adjust everything okay so this this linkage might be difficult to do with one hand but I'm gonna try okay, get it over Once you get it on there, you gotta make sure you sleeve it over like that. So zoom out, there you go. So it's just, it slides through that, and then you clip it in. And it locks in. There we go, and that's locked in now. And that's your auto choke. Eventually I might go down here and clean all this out, but I'm not worried about it right now, because it seems to be working. And now, we are going to go ahead and hook up the linkage. Okay, so you just take a 11 millimeter wrench and you pop it on this side. And I just use my impact with a half inch to zap this bolt, a nut loose. Now I just gotta maneuver that out of there. And once it comes out, you're good. Let's go put this on the new one. Let's do it.
on that. Simple as that. Now I'm just gonna hook up all the linkage back up. Start with that. Start all back on. There we go, that's on there. Gotta put a washer back on there. This is where our little washer goes back on here. We're gonna cradle that, our little cotter pin. We try to reinstall that with our wire cutters here. These are just little wire cutters. I use them for removing pins and springs. They work really well because they have this little hook right here. You can actually grab stuff too. And that's good. And now we just gotta put these springs back on. That one goes there. And we have one that comes from back here. I believe these both go over here. But yeah. That one touches there. And yep, I'm more tension again. Gotta hook up the fuel line and get that done. We'll be ready. Alright, that's tight. Get that fuel line up there. We are going to find that vacuum line. This one right here that really doesn't have a place for it. I don't know why. And I'm going to plug this one off for now and see if it runs okay. We should be able to fire it now. Let's see what happens. Okay, so now we're going to fire and see how it runs. It's going to take a minute probably to fire because it's got to fill that float bowl up. I was wrong. Let's fire right up. Okay, yeah. Must have been what was in the intake. All right. Come on, baby. I'm that fuel. We're going to check underneath the hood, make sure we're not squirting fuel everywhere. Okay, we look good. All right, so let's just keep messing with it. Okay, so I dripped a little bit of fuel into the carburetor to get it running, and now it's running great. I just got done adjusting some of the screws. I put the air filter back on, plugged some of the vacuum lines off, and the throttle's like right there. It feels pretty darn good. The idle might be a little high, as soon as I put it in gear, it does bog down a little bit. You're gonna have that. But right. we're gonna take it for a test drive, see how it reacts. Let's do it. All right, so we just got done plugging off the vacuum lines I don't really, I'm not too worried about. Stuffed a spark plug, bottle cap for the exhaust one. So now this is just free. I can just move it off anytime. I'm gonna eventually be modifying a uh, different intake on here I'll probably get a chrome air filter assembly for it and making it work for my engine I'll probably do a video on that but for now the ugly one is going back on this thing is hideous it looks like a ugly wannabe Legos it's got the yellow the blue and the orange it's got some ugly going on here uh, it's, a whole lot of ugly. it's a whole lot of ugly, but 
it runs pretty darn good. All right, let's bump the key. In. I'm in the process of changing the tack, all the gauge cluster, because um, I don't have a speedometer. I don't have temps. I've just been driving it for about, what, a year and a half? So. With none of this working. So I bought a used one from a guy who was parting out one of these trucks. So luckily I got it. It's really nice looking. He said that's the actual mileage on this, on that truck. So mine is at like what? 105k? I don't know. I think it rolled over once. At least. 110k, something like that. But it worked for a short period of time after I got it. But okay, let's bump the key and let's see what it does. Okay. It's not bad, it's cold. There we go. The throttle response is perfect. I love it. There's no hesitant, nothing. It just goes. It was like I'll barely tap it. I'll have to ease in on the throttle to get it to take off. Now it's just there. I like that. A brand new carburetor. I was hesitant about buying an eBay carb, but honestly, it seems to be working. Now, as age goes on, we don't know how good the gaskets are going to be, but we'll find out. I'll do like an update video later on on this carburetor. All right, guys, so if you like this, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more videos on pretty much whatever we're working on that day. We work on a lot of different things cars, trucks go-karts, mini bikes, might even be a riding mower one day. We don't know. Heck, we might even be hooking up a stereo system. It's whatever we feel like doing that day. But this thing rocks. The truck's alive again. Now I gotta go You get a load of trash in it. Cause it's a work truck and it makes me money. So let's go ahead and get this thing wrapped up. Don't forget, hit that like button, subscribe. See y'all next.